Hello, everyone. This is Matt Britton. Uh, first and foremost, I am sorry that you can't see my face today, although by now many of you probably know what I look like. Um, we have had, it's funny, we've been doing the State of Consumer webinars since March of 2020. And, you know, eventually I think the law of, of averages always comes to hit you. And today is the first day that we have had our technical difficulties. So uh, I was not able to log in from my computer. Um, I'm doing this from my phone. Um, I'm hoping that everyone can see um, and hear me right now, and we're going to dive in. So um, if I can get on the uh, on the video, obviously, I will try to. Otherwise, hopefully, the voice and the slides work, and I know that our guests will be able to get in um, uh, uh, as well. Um, so we'll, we'll get started. Today is about spring cleaning um, and spring cleaning the home, the body, and the mind. Uh, it's getting really nice out where I am. Um, here in New York, the, 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 the leaves are, are um, now turning green. Finally, the, you know, the, the flowers are blooming and we're all ready, especially here in the Northeast and probably many of you and many other climates in the U.S. to kind of get on with their lives. And a big part of the spring every year is the notion of spring cleaning. And since we work with so many folks in the consumer packaged goods and food and beverage space that, you know, really push consumers to continually think about their living environments, uh, we thought this was a great topic to go into today. Um, as we continue to enter, um, you know, another uncertain season, uh, the summer of 2022, uh, there's still so, so, so many unknowns, whether it's the economy, um, whether it's the state of COVID and where it's at right now. So hopefully today we're going to try to unpack some of these things uh, for everybody today. Um, for those of you who don't know what Suzy is, Suzy is a market research platform um, that really helps major brands keep their finger on the pulse of the consumer. Um, we have an always on um, platform that allows our brands to tap into specific segments, to talk to the consumers that matter, to really embrace consumer centricity and help consumers drive decision making. Um, I'm Matt Britton, I'm founder and CEO of Suzy, um, and obviously today not a great resident tech expert. Um, I've been fumbling around with wires and devices, but again, this will have to do, so I appreciate everyone um, bearing with us today. Uh, and we do have two great guests, um, Shireen uh, Elzamana from Sambazan and Chaim Kalaria from Reckit, um, two partners of Suzy that do a lot of work in the consumer packaged goods uh, space and really have great insights on the notion of spring cleaning um, and, and the consumer overall. So I'm gonna go through a presentation and then at the end, I'm gonna bring them on for a discussion. So um, today we are gonna be reviewing a variety of different data points that kind of support the story we're gonna be talking about. Um, and those data points are supported by a study that we ran on Suzy um, of a thousand US consumers um, that are census weighted across age, gender, ethnicity, and region. So when we speak of Suzy data that supports today's uh, presentation, that's where the data is coming from. So spring clean, spring is sprung and so is spring cleaning, um, an obvious rite of passage uh, for consumers. Spring cleaners anticipate cleaning and organizing more than usual this year. Uh, many consumers over the past year have once again uh, been stuck at home. What we've seen through economic data is consumers have really piled up unprecedented amounts of stuff um, over the last two years um, as they've been stuck at home. Um, and not able to go out and travel. So, you know, they've been spending a lot of their uh, pent up spending um, demand, not into experiences and travel, um, but the actual physical items. Um, and as a result, you have consumers with just a ton of, of inventory uh, and, and not knowing what to do with it. Uh, the importance of, of cleaning, however, goes beyond the home. Um, consumers really um, look at, at spring cleaning as not just a physical aspect, but really a mental aspect. Um, consumers feel that if they get control of their, of their household, um, of their environment, they can really start to alter in a positive way their mental state. So one of the things we're definitely going to be speaking about today is more of the, the spiritual and, and, and mental aspects of spring cleaning and how the act of physically decluttering um, and cleaning up and getting organized actually does help consumers uh, with their mental states. Um, you know, and we're starting to see the media this year, I think more than ever, as we have so much more of an emphasis on mental health of the consumer, really start to make this connection, make the connection between physical um, and spiritual um, and, 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 and how both those things are impacted by the notion of spring cleaning. So in this webinar, we're really gonna explore spring cleaning from really two angles, one of which the home, uh, again, the physical aspect, and second of which the mind and body, the spiritual aspect of spring cleaning. 
So how are consumers actually spring cleaning their homes this year? Um, well, it obviously took on new importance during the pandemic. Uh, we all remember in 2020, the stars of, of the pandemic um, were, were brands like Clorox and Purell. Uh, there was a time when Purell was basically like liquid gold <laughs> in March of 2020 as consumers clamored uh, to try to do everything they could to get their hands on these products because obviously, you know, their ability to disinfect themselves and disinfect them, their homes really made them feel more comfortable about preventing, you know, COVID when it was first starting from entering their home and ultimately impacting their families. Um, as we fought against the virus, though, killing germs and bacteria, uh, bacteria were, were top priority, but it's changed today. So, you know, in 2020, it was all about the antibacterial uh, power of the cleaning products and the fact that it eliminates germs. Um, consumers in 2020, and we actually covered this topic um, quite deeply in 2020, told us that they didn't care about the impact on the environment. They didn't care about how, chemi um, you know, maybe um, from a chemical standpoint, how it could create negative toxins in the home. They didn't care about any of that. All they cared about was, is this going to be a product that can actually kill the virus and protect my family? Um, and that was a, you know, that was a very unique time in history, obviously, and it had a very unique impact um, on the industry um, of cleaning overall. Uh, you had companies in, uh, in 2020 like Clorox uh, lifting their forecast um, after they had their best sales jump in over 20 years. Um, again, the demand on these products was really unprecedented um, at that point. But now that COVID has sort of created this new normal, so to speak, um, it's probably the thousandth time I've said this since we launched the State of Consumer webinar, um, and consumers sort of have readjusted what does that mean for cleaning moving forward? What does that mean for demand on cleaning type products? Um, now, we, we heard from uh, the, the head of the American Cleaning Institute. I was actually unaware that there was American Cleaning Institute, but I think there's um, obviously an association for everything. Um, and we actually did a lot of research on this topic. And uh, what Melissa Hochstad said, who's the CEO of the American Cleaning Institute, was it's not a fad. While we're expecting some significant drop off as we look to this year and beyond, the behaviors will really become part of the norm. Um, and, and that we're going to continuing to see consumers put cleaning front and center as we move ahead. Um, however, new data does suggest that people in some ways are reverting uh, back to their old ways. Obviously, some of the, um, you know, darlings of the pandemic um, have obviously normalized, uh, like, you know, companies like Peloton and Zoom and from a stock market perspective and companies like Clorox and companies that sell cleaning products. I wouldn't say that, that they're crashing like tech companies. They're just coming back down to their normal levels um, of consumption uh, from consumers. But I think spring cleaning is front of mind with consumers in a way that um, probably will never change. 73% of people plan on cleaning their home this year. Um, and that's up from last year. So consumers, and a big reason why is that so many consumers have put so much more of an emphasis on the home. Uh, many consumers are working from home. They have moved into new phone, uh, homes. They've invested more time and capital into their homes. And as a result, their home is just more top of mind. Um, in a world where consumers were way more um, transient and traveling way more, you know, the, the notion of, of their home was just not something they thought about as much. But now since the home has taken on such a renewed importance for the consumer, it's no surprise that more and more consumers are doing spring cleaning. Obviously, the housing boom has a huge impact. Uh, what we saw during the pandemic is consumers really reevaluate their living situations and consumers start to think about um, what type of environment do I want to be raising my family in? Um, many consumers for the first time ever were stuck working from home and many consumers are still um, in that state of working from home. Um, many, many consumers had to teach their kids from home. China and Scottsdale, Arizona, as consumers sought out more warm weather environments. We've also seen consumers prioritize larger spaces. Uh, so whether that's moving to secondary or tertiary markets or moving from the city to the suburbs. Um, and that combined with record low interest rates created a massive housing boom that we are still kind of in the middle of, although there's questions on how that long, how long that will last. Um, at the same time, had many consumers moving. And when they were moving,
So killing germs now in relation to cleaning products has taken a backseat. Um, and now consumers, when we ask them what the top priorities are for cleaning products here in 2022, it's gone back to the same answers that they've given us um, in, in 2019, which are, I want products to be effective. So efficacy, um, top of mind and multi-purpose. Uh, and that really speaks to consumers certainly right now being more budget minded than they have at any point in the last several years uh as we see what's happening in the markets as we've seen um rising costs overall um driven by inflation consumers are starting to think about well is this product multi-purpose can i use it for for many different ways in my home because i don't want to buy six or seven new products i want one product that can do as many things as possible again these were not the top priorities for consumers in the middle of the pandemic um they were really about it being antibacterial and germ killers but now they're thinking a little bit more broadly about you know the, the how important their cleaning products actually are uh, so as the threat of the virus subsides, and it certainly hasn't completely subsided yet, being here in New York, we're seeing yet another surge right now. But there's definitely new things to talk about when it comes to cleaning for the consumers. Uh, one big trend that we start to see um, in the years 2015, 16, 17, 18, et cetera, was the notion of sustainability in cleaning products. Uh, we saw brands like Method have a huge run um, prior to the pandemic as consumers really started to think about bringing more natural products into their home and having more sustainable packaging um, from the cleaning products that they bought. And now we're starting to see consumers definitely think about that once again in ways they certainly didn't during the pandemic. Uh, companies like Sith Innovation, um, which is in, in the space, um, is dramatically cutting plastic use and transport emissions with their products. And especially with this younger millennial buyer, um, you know, who is much more environmentally conscious than certainly Gen X, um, it, you know, they're putting that back up to the top of the list as something that uh, they see important. Of course, always with products like these, it's a balancing act between buying products that fits their moral objectives or their moral code around sustainability, but also being one that they can afford. Um, and that's obviously the dance that consumers have when it relates to products like this. Um, you know, we're seeing things like reusable paper towels uh, for less waste at home. You know, products, again, we didn't really see during the pandemic, but now, um, you know, that, you know, the risk has subsided. We're seeing some of these products come back again. Uh, we're also seeing consumers kind of rethink who's responsible for cleaning, because now what you have is you have, you know, when you had um, two parent working households, you know, and they were both gone, they might have been more ready to hire outside help, perhaps. But now when consumers are working at home, many of them have taken on these chores on their own. And the, the household roles have really been redefined uh, during this pandemic. And, you know, now there's chore apps coming on that basically uh, allow consumers to assign chore, uh, chores to other people and their family when it comes to household um, chores and household responsibilities. So the role of cleaning in the home has also been redefined um, as we're coming uh, out of this pandemic. The number one hardest part of spring cleaning that we hear from consumers is finding time to do it. Um, obviously, what what's happening right now as the world reopens, especially heading into the summer months, as consumers are far more on the go. And we went from a time where consumers had uh, plenty of money and, and plenty of time to now maybe a little bit less money because we're seeing credit uh, overall for consumer rise. We're seeing savings go down and they certainly have less time um, because they are able to go out and enjoy themselves again. And, you know, now this summer you're seeing consumers, uh, you know, at record levels make summer travel plans. So the time to, to, to clean at home is definitely a pressure point uh, for consumers. I um, mean, obviously the emotional side of cleaning, uh, cleaning, for those of you who are in the category and probably understand this, it's a very emotional behavior. Uh, and what consumers want to experience after spring cleaning is feeling satisfied um, or feeling accomplished, uh, feeling like they check the box on things that were incredibly um, important to them to feel again free and to feel organized and almost feel put together. And once they've accomplished spring cleaning, this is sort of that emotion that, that they want to get to, the payoff, so to speak, that I think brands can really tap into when communicating the benefits of cleaning their home. 57% of U.S. adults view cleaning um, and, and, and disinfecting as an act of care for themselves and others. So again, not so much a functional chore, but more sort of an emotional behavior. 
uh, where I'm looking at my home and the act of cleaning my home is taking care of myself and taking care of my family. Many wouldn't look at it that way, you know, from the outside. They probably think, oh, it's just another chore to get done. But there's something um, about the act of, of cleaning your home and decluttering and kind of getting set for a renewed season of summer that has a strong emotional impact on consumers and one that, again, I think can really be uh, tapped into. The American Cleaning Institute recently introduced a cleaning as caring um, and, and underscored really the um, fundamental role of cleaning in today's society. So, again, we're really seeing this across the board. Um, and consumers are proving they care about cleaning with their wallet. So while they are definitely more um, budget conscious than ever before, they're not afraid to spend and, and, and prioritize this. Uh, the number one thing that people are buying to prepare for spring cleaning is, is cleaning supplies uh, and making sure they have the right supplies uh, to clean their home. And what's interesting, and I've actually seen this myself, is um, with, with the younger generations, but now spreading really across the board, um, we are seeing consumers seek out cleaning content um, on places like TikTok. Um, there are a, a variety of TikTok influencers that focus on cleaning and organization. Um, and these influencers really wield a lot of power and influence over consumers and their behaviors and their buying habits. And it's just crazy to think about the fact that even cleaning can be something that's trendy um, on TikTok. And, uh, and, and this is something that consumers um, have sought out. Um, in fact, one out of five consumers are engaging with cleaning content uh, on social media. Uh, they're, they're seeking it out and something that they find entertaining. Uh, there's a hashtag clean talk, which if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, I certainly recommend you do. Maybe not right now in the middle of the webinar, but afterwards uh, to actually see um, you know, this phenomenon that's taking place. Uh, you can see this one consumer said, I'm obsessed now with clean talk and and pretty cleaning products. And it's just, it's something that a, a lot of consumers, I guess, identify and associate with uh, and want to gravitate towards. 41% uh, of consumers who engage with cleaning content on social media uh, watch product reviews. So once they get into the topic and once they start to um, kind of see influencers talk about cleaning, they dig deeper on their own. They start to look at product reviews and try to see what the best products are that they want to purchase uh, for spring cleaning. Um, Although online is great discovery for consumers, still the number one place that consumers are discovering new cleaning products is at mass retailers. Uh, they're wandering the aisles. M many consumers now are buying products in physical stores. Uh, you may have seen recently companies like um, Amazon and, uh, and Shopify talk about how they're seeing uh, less growth um, online. Uh, this, these previous quarters that they had obviously a year ago when many consumers were still scared to go into stores. Now consumers are going back um, into stores uh, more so. And as a result, uh, they, you know, it's definitely a huge area for discovery of these products. 77% consumers are, are discovering through mass retailers, while only 38% online uh, in terms of where consumers are finding out. Um, and, you know, again, with TikTok, they're, you know, they're, some of the TikToks are talking about where you can actually find these products, how cheap you can get them for, et cetera. It's, it, you know, it, it really has become uh, quite trendy. Um, but interesting enough, cleaning isn't even actually the most popular form of spring cleaning. The most popular form of, screen, uh, of spring cleaning is actually decluttering. So when, when consumers think about spring cleaning, yes, there's the aspect of, getting rid of that mold that might be in your bathtub or, or, or scrubbing your, your, um, your range stove and getting rid of the grease and th to make your house look shiny and, of course, disinfect, et cetera. But many consumers, when, when you bring up the term spring cleaning, they're thinking about decluttering and thinking about getting rid of things. Um, and right now, what we found is that, you know, the out with the old, in with the new has been really replaced with just out with the old. Uh -huh. um, many consumers have piled up so many things during the pandemic, as I mentioned earlier, as a result of stimulus checks, record high savings, the inability to go out and travel. And we've gotten to a point as an American consumer where we basically have bought everything that we need. Now, obviously, consumers still have wants, you know, whether it's luxury goods or things of that nature. But in terms of what we need, consumers have it. In fact, this week, both Walmart and Target um, had dramatic misses on their earnings. And what they both said was that where
pandemic, if you needed a TV when you were stuck at home, you probably bought it then. Um, and so many of the things that consumers need to upgrade around their home, whether it was a dishwasher or a refrigerator, we've seen many consumers already just do that. And now it's almost the opposite where they bought so many things, maybe their bodies have changed during the pandemic too. Um, and they're, they're stuck with a lot of clothing that they don't need anymore. So I think this year, more than perhaps any year that we've seen in recent history, consumers are really Um, and get rid of things that, you know, I'm not wearing. There's that old adage, if you haven't worn it in the past year, you should probably get rid of it. Um, and we're really seeing that um, in mass this year. In fact, the other category that both Target, but specifically Walmart said, um, where they missed, where they had record high inventory in stores was clothing. Um, they overbought for clothing and probably to overcorrect for supply chain issues because, you know, many retailers didn't know when they'd be able to get these products. And what they're finding is that they have an unprecedented amount of product on store shelves in apparel. Because again, so many consumers um, have bought so much stuff that they haven't even gotten to use yet. And as a result, there's less demand there. So that's just a key insight in terms of consumers really you know, the the whole notion of mass consumerization, which we've definitely seen over the last couple of years, you know, we might be seeing a little bit of a shift, especially in the wake of rising prices. Um, new products have nothing to do with cleaning um, when it relates to spring cleaning or seeing the lowest resonance. So only 15% of consumers now want new furniture. Um, only 13% want new lawn supplies, 15% new homeware products. And these are, again, products that were had in massive demand during the pandemic. In fact, I remember in 2020, I was going through the growth of certain online categories, you know, and how they were just incredible explosion year over year growth from 2019 to 2020. These were some of the categories that people were buying. Everybody was buying furniture. You saw companies like Wayfair explode on their stock price. Everybody was buying homeware products. In fact, I think bread makers was like the number one category. And now we're, we're probably seeing a, a whiplash, a reverse of that, um, you know, in this new world. Uh, so many consumers are waking up to problems of overconsumption. Um, and one place many consumers are turning to is places like eBay um, and Etsy and StockX and some of these secondhand marketplaces to get rid of stuff. So you're seeing really an uh, infusion of inventory in a lot of these platforms, uh, Facebook Marketplace being another, where consumers are saying, okay, some of the stuff I can give away and donate, but I may be able to sell some of this stuff as well. And for the buyer, again, in the world of raising prices, these secondhand marketplaces also create, um, you know, it, you know, a great avenue for consumers to buy things at a lot cheap, more cheaply. Um, others want less stuff because it's trendy. Uh, recently, Kim Kardashian, for those of you who are a fan of her, showed off her new minimalist home uh, in a video online. Uh, there's a whole kind of decluttering, um, you know, movement that has happened with Netflix documentaries and the like, where uh, Marie Kondo obviously has a huge following um, when it comes to minimalism and decluttering, and it's kind of taken on new meaning uh, for sure. So as I mentioned earlier, consumers aren't only thinking about cleaning in the physical sense. They're also thinking about it in the spiritual and mental sense. Um, you know, getting rid of things also, um, you know, again, applies to the mind and how to declutter the mind and how to clear your mind. Obviously, we've seen a massive um, focus on mental health uh, across our society. We've seen a massive focus in categories like um, you know, meditation and yoga and overall wellness. Many new businesses have popped up uh, during the pandemic, like companies like Calm that focus um, on meditation. And, you know, the, the, that's really front and center for consumers uh, right now. A third of consumers said they plan on spring cleaning their mind by just letting go. The notion of letting go right now, and obviously that has, um, you know, multiple definitions, letting go of physical stuff, letting go of mental things that are kind of weighing you down, whether it's regret or animosity. Uh, and and there's been many best-selling books in the last several months about just letting go, about just being okay with, um, you know, moving on from certain things uh, in life. Uh, as people take a more relaxed approach to well-being, um, they're actually more involved in things that see lower resonance. So, um, you know, consumers right now have moved away from things that are super involved. So if it's a long-term cleanse or it's something where it, it's, it has a high level of effort, what we're finding is consumers really don't have the motivation to do those sort of things that they have in the past. Maybe it's 
everything they've been through in the last couple of years, but the solutions for mental fitness um, that have become popular have actually become the ones that have been far more simple um, in nature. Uh, here's a tweet um, saying, I just deleted my meditation app and found it meditative. Um, and I think that's sort of a great way to kind of embody this notion that, you know, we are seeing consumers really want to, when you talk about decluttering, sure, they want to cleanse their mind. But if it involves sort of sort of like a very regimented process to clean their mind, then in some ways it's counterintuitive to them. Um, and they're not as focused with it. We see Mindy Kaling saying, done with crash diets and punishing yourself with exercise. Um, I think many consumers are also really, frankly, just becoming a lot more grateful for the everyday things right now. And that push that we may have seen in the past um, to have that perfect overall perception has really changed. And we've seen that happen on things like um, Instagram, where for so long we saw people trying to create a, a perfect uh, external perception of themselves on Instagram. And even now that's changed. Uh, we're seeing way more authentic content take off on platforms like TikTok versus the more staged content that we found. Um, people rejecting anything that adds more stress to their lives and turning to more simple ways to spring clean their minds and their bodies, like getting outside in the fresh air, um, practicing gratitude, just very simple things. Um, so that's interesting as well. So key takeaways before we bring on our guests, um, you know, in terms of spring cleaning um, in the home, um, the, the, the motivations have changed for sure. Uh, consumers have really now reverted a lot back to our pre-pandemic um, you know, priorities relative to what's important to them uh, in cleaning products. However, at the same time, spring cleaning is more important than ever before, given the, the importance of the home. Um, so that that's sort of where spring cleaning um, is headed. Um, and social media has really changed the game. We're seeing, you know, again, like platforms like TikTok really create trends out of a topic that many of us probably thought would never be a trend. Um, and it, it's really inspiring consumers to, to prioritize this. Um, and in terms of, you know, the, the mind and, and body, we're seeing consumers really move away from more involved uh, mental cleansing exercises to things that are far more simple. So I'm going to bring in our guests now, uh, Shireen and Shyam, um, if you guys wouldn't mind joining. And first of all, so sorry, I can't see either of your faces right now. This is literally the first webinar I've been on since I haven't been able to. I'm actually going to try. That's your work because I, oh, yeah. I didn't want to be the only one. Like, good to see you guys. I'm, I'm on good my phone you. camera. It's actually working pretty good. So um, first of all, thanks for joining. Um, I'd love each of you to just give a little bit of a background um, of yourselves and your careers and, uh, you know, in, in this area. So let's start with you, Shireen. Perfect. Yeah. So hi, I'm Shireen Osama. I'm the VP of product marketing and innovation at Samazon. And uh, Samazon is the first certified fair trade and organic acai company in the world. So for those of you who don't know acai, it's a uh, Better for you superfood that comes from the Brazilian Amazon. So really, our whole purpose is about delivering the, the delicious powers of acai to help fuel healthier people, a healthier planet. And we do so with a variety of different acai-based products, from smoothies to ready-to-eat bowls, desserts, and beverages. And uh, essentially what I do at the, at the company is that I oversee everything that has to do with the product life cycle from beginning to end. So from consumer insights to new product development that helps us really provide products that tap into and solve for consumer pain points, as well as developing effective communication campaigns that help drive the growth. And I come from a extensive CPG background, uh, dabbled a bit in tech as well, uh, worked with the Coca-Cola company. So understand like the resonance of big brands and um, big companies as well. Happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. And thanks for your patience this morning. Uh, Shame, I'd love uh, a little background from you as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, I'm Sham. I work Hi. at Reckit. Um, I'm the consumer science and insights researcher, the lead for our hygiene brands, Lysol and Harpic specifically. So a lot of my work can really spread from just helping people find the right color for a product to planning out research plans with partners like Hilton or or Boeing and I mean, or Delta companies we worked with and our brands I worked with before as well. Uh, my background is actually a lot more in research and development, but over the last three years, I've been focused a lot more on the consumer side as well, which is a good mix of being able to understand the technical problems that people may face in R&D, as well as in innovation, but also knowing 
that when and how to really bring the consumer in all those different touch points that we have. And Sean, what, what, what big changes have you seen over the last year to 18 months when it comes to the category overall um, and how consumers are looking at the importance of your brands? Yeah, so definitely we've also seen like the similar stats that you're noticing when it comes to just changes from importance of what people care about. So they're still caring a lot more about a term that we use is called efficacy. So effectiveness of a product, it doesn't necessarily need to be germ kill or killing germs. It can also be things like it works easily. It works well to clean different stains and different things that people have, which you're seeing when it comes to like the multi-purposeness and being effective at cleaning. People still want that, especially when they're going through spring cleaning and they actually want to do that really deep clean in their home. We are seeing that the general kind of concern around germs is, is, is still there for some subsets of populations. But overall, people are starting to, especially people who are vaccinated, are starting to really kind of open up to going outside, being um, involved in the community more. They're still keeping certain trends like related to wearing masks, using hand sanitizer, washing their hands often. But things like in their home, they're cleaning less often than the beginning of the pandemic as well as even a little later when the Omnicon variant came up and there was like the rise in that as well. So you are seeing a little decrease in that sense, especially when it comes to focus and disinfection. And is that changing at all the, the positioning um, of, of some of the products in terms of the unique selling propositions, how you're merchandising it, et cetera? Yeah, no, definitely. I think as a germ kill brand, of course, germ killers are main core and that's what Lysol is known for and what we focus on. But we also focus very heavily when it comes to the different sensorial aspects of our products, as well as just how people feel and experience them, especially when it comes to fragrances. So we have our new brand new day lines, which are very much spring focused in the sense of just the fragrance experience people have, as well as just the overall experience on the branding and the imagery and different things like that. So it's definitely things that we focus on. We always want to make sure we give our consumers the best experience they can have when it comes to just the fragrances, the sensory sense, sensations they have, as well as just how well it cleans. We don't want them to be on their hands and knees for the whole day. We want them to know that when they get Lysol, it's going to be effective and it's going to be a fun job doing it at the same time. Yeah. And, and Shereen, you're obviously in a different category and I would imagine the part of the presentation I just gave that speaks to you a little bit more is sort of on the on the kind of mind body part of spring cleaning. Um, so I guess how has the demand for your product changed over the last couple of years, just given you know this whole trajectory that we just spoke of with the consumer? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I, I echo a lot of the observations you had. I think um, for us, we were lucky with our product being a more better for you product and a frozen product. We did see a spike kind of happen in the COVID era, especially as a lot of the, the, the consumption kind of moved from on, on premise to more at home. Uh, but I think that the interesting thing is that we're seeing that continue and a need from the consumer to focus on simplicity and convenience. Uh, like we said, like they want to spend more time with family, focus on their health more, uh, be able to kind of go out and enjoy life. And that's the, the key thing that's coming out of the, the experience. So for us as a brand and as a product, how can we insert ourselves into that narrative and where they're really focused and make sure that our product is um, helping deliver on that like multi-purpose objective. They want to find products that are easy to kind of use, easy to consume, serving on this sense of accomplishment that I am doing something that is better for myself, better for my family, uh, but also not taking too much time and adding stress for me to prepare. So um, changing our messaging in a way to make sure that we're focusing on how you can swap your cereal bowl in the morning for an acai bowl or swap the burrito that you're buying from like a drive through and these small changes are, um, are really allowing you to feel more accomplished and and allow us to kind of fit that narrative better without adding too much stress in their lives of I have to buy a variety of different products to, to make sure that I'm making a very healthy uh, smoothie that is serving the needs of my family friends so that's been a key thing that we've seen that shift in in the focus of like more simplicity and convenience less is more more multi-purpose products uh, and it doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's efficient and effective and um, that's been the pivot and the lens that we've taken with our messaging and I guess for to either of you, have you seen a shift 
in the distribution of the products over the last, I guess, six to 12 months in terms of where these products are being purchased? Because obviously at one point it was just e-commerce was the only game in town. Uh, how has the mix changed recently? Um, yeah, I think stores have been open for a while now. It's still kind of, there are some supply chain issues still going around everywhere as we know, but you are seeing, especially when it comes to if somebody is a person who works from home versus somebody who's working in the office, you're seeing the different kinds of people are going to shopping in the store more often, as well as because things like cleaning products specifically, so like for Lysol, they're in the same realm in a sense as groceries. So when you're going to shop groceries, you're likely going to get your household goods. So right. even like during the pandemic, people would still go into the shops to get cleaning products. But you saw an uptick in just online shopping or ordering online and then picking up and different things like that. But now as things are a little more open, things are more in stock as well in comparison to when you could barely find Clorox or Lysol on the shelves. Um, people, you are seeing um, us focus more on just like corner stores as retail stores, just because people are going in more. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And have you guys ever dealt with any kind of direct to consumer models? Has that been something that you've explored and went to market with? We uh, we definitely saw an uptick uh, uptick in like um, online behaviors as well in terms of grocery shopping. We yep. have started to kind of get into a more of a direct to consumer effort, but with frozen products, it tends to be a bit um, challenging and and right. that sense, so it's still a bit of a a budding growing thing for for us as a brand. Uh, but I think to echo what Chaim was saying is we we've definitely seen more people focus on buying their groceries online. Um, partially, they want to lessen like they're they're going into a store. And the other thing I think is this whole like decluttering mindset, where people when you go into a store, you easily get distracted and you're buying more than you need to. So I think a part yeah. of the behavior has been online. I have a shopping list. I can easily kind of go and really be selective on what I'm picking out. So that has been a challenge um, for CPG brands. Definitely mass is still like the bigger part of that. But with that shift in an acceptance of online um, shopping, we are going to need to be very um, tight with our messaging, making sure that we're present uh, on these platforms to really convert the consumer at that point of purchase. Uh, it's becoming more and more challenging for sure. Yeah. And I think, Shireen, um, I think as consumers now sh maybe shift their spending framework, away from just buying stuff for their home to being out and about. Mm -hmm. I would imagine, does that change your positioning at all or the way that you go to market with consumers? Yes, definitely. So um, a key thing that we're trying to look at as well as is inserting ourselves into that narrative. So knowing that consumers don't want to be spending time at home, they want to be more out, more engaging with life and like the quality of life aspect is again, focusing on how we can um, show them that our product is designed for that ease and convenience, how it can be taken on the go and it can be part of your outdoor experience rather than something that you have to do at home and just limit yourself at home um, and definitely how it can fit in their routines and it doesn't have to change the routine, how it can simplify their existing routines as well and again serve multiple family needs um, with like variety of flavors and, and assortments that we have. So that's been a key thing. And then the other thing is the inspirational educational content that we're putting out there as a brand. So uh, obviously we need to, to kind of inspire the consumers. So this is, I think, where it's great to work with influencers, have them be the providers of like the hacks, the, the ideas yeah. and to kind of enjoy life and insert your product in a way that makes sense. So that's been another focus for us as well as really um, supporting that mindset of the well-being, even offering online um, like webinars where we got specific um, um, like gurus and wellness health uh, minded um, instructors to kind of be able to serve that need from the consumer without forcing our product down there like throat essentially. So that's been another shift that we've done with how we're um, strategizing on this. Yeah, Sean, I see you n uh, nodding. I mean, have you guys had a similar experience at Reckit in terms of influencers and ways that you've been able to build content to build your brands? Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, there's been a recent, like, especially just with the pandemic, around just educating people of how to clean, how to disinfect, how to keep your school safe, how to keep your home safe, and different things like that. So we're looking at just different avenues of doing it, whether it just be commit like dedicated articles uh, sponsored by us, working with different like TikTok influencers and different things like that, just to 
get people thinking and involved in um, just what's the first thing they can do for spring cleaning or what's the second thing they can do or how do you clean this really tough stain that almost nobody knows how to clean for some reason um, but you just you need the help on figuring out how to do it especially those yellow rings in your toilet or something yeah. it may be. <laughs> but just it, providing that providing that information just guidance around hey we're the pros we know how to do this and let us help you out and it'll be hopefully make your life easier and it'll give you more reassurance that what you're doing is right and your family is safe and that you can go do more things because you're staying safe. Yeah. And were you surprised or were you aware of the clean talk, like TikTok movements around cleaning? Because that was definitely something that I just uncovered, you know, preparing oh, for this. I mean, I, I've seen a lot of them. Sometimes I get worried just out of like, you shouldn't mix certain chemicals, but usually most of the people are very well educated on how to do different things when it comes to cleaning. And it's, fun. I think it's like the idea of like satisfaction, like you were talking about earlier, Matt, when it comes to cleaning and spring cleaning, yep. satisfaction, feeling accomplished, being able to see people um, do it. It's kind of like, like food porn in a sense, but like cleaning porn of just being satisfied that like that dirty surface got pretty much clean from really grimy and dirty to being like crystal white. It's yeah. very satisfying. Before, before, before and after, so to speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as we head into the back half of the year, uh, you know, the fall and, and, and the last months, the holiday season, et cetera. We obviously have a lot of uncertainties with the consumer. You know, we have rising prices that are really starting to hit home, whether it's with gasoline or everyday product consumers are buying. Uh, we have this geopolitical, uh, you know, tension that's happening, uh, which is impacting a lot of people. We obviously have the stock market that's continuing to plummet and making people certainly feel less rich, people with more credit than ever before. So how, I'm just curious, what do you think some of the things we're going to see um, evolve with the consumer in the back half of the year? Are there, what are your thoughts on where things are going? I'll start with you, Shireen. Anything that we should be looking at? Yeah, and um, I think I would say the most important thing is going to be like the share of wallets and the spend. Um, that is definitely something that we're looking that is going to be impacting us all. We've already started seeing flattening across the board. You mentioned Target and Walmart is a good example. Yeah. Um, so I think that is going to be the biggest um, challenge for a lot of brands out there and more competitive in the sense of how you can make yourself stand out as why you need to continue to, to buy this and um, accept that it's going to lessen a bit, but really be very competitive with the positioning. And this is where I think um, topics like sustainability really come into play with with um, that younger millennial and Gen Z generation, because for every dollar that they're spending, uh, it is becoming something that is very important. So focusing on showcasing how we are a sustainable brand um, and really make that dollar count is is another kind of key uh, pivot area and focus for us uh, in trying to kind of win that uh, battle of attention and um, the, the share of wallets. Yeah, it's interesting. I saw Brian Cornell, the CEO of Target, get interviewed this morning. And what he said was interesting. He said that the consumer is still very strong and mm. many of their categories still have tremendous demand. Uh, but then there's certain, it's uneven, right? There's certain categories, as I mentioned earlier, whether it's heavy appliances or TVs or things like that, that consumers just don't have as much demand on. Because at the same time that there's so many headwinds right now, you still have record low unemployment. It's sub uh, 4%. Um, and you still have a very healthy consumer. So there's just so many mixed messages coming out of the economy in terms of how it's going to impact uh, the consumer. But I guess, Sean, like, what, what else do you see happening in, in the back half of the year? Yeah, no, I think it, it really is, it can be split between the different types of consumers we're seeing as well. We're seeing like that, the bottom half who is very much like they may have a job, but they're struggling. Like they're taking care yeah. of kids. They may only have one income earner and they're just, they're making sure they just get through each day. Um, right. Some of them have maybe a little more buying power, but they're concerned. They want to make sure and see kind of really, okay, what do we need to stockpile now? Um, just in case we go into a full-blown recession or something yep. else happens in the world. And then you are seeing people who are actually pretty comfortable. They're like, they're doing fine. They have a good paying job. They honestly didn't have that many expenses. And they're still, they're maybe not buying those like big ticket items like you mentioned, but they're still going out and like maybe going to festivals or traveling a little or buying things that are still things they want. Uh, not necessarily just what they need. And then you're seeing those people who are doing really well and they're maybe flourishing and they're still maybe going out and doing and buying new things and experiencing things. And they might actually be going kind of back towards pre-pandemic levels of just 
what they want to buy and what they need to buy. But also like the earlier trends you mentioned, still being minimalistic and different things like that. But yeah, it's very, it's interesting to see because it's kind of like a mixture of in the middle of the pandemic and at the beginning of the pandemic where like when you took a picture of the shelves are only like these random um, vegan cheese left, but right, everything else was left. Vegan. But then in the middle of the pandemic, you started seeing people kind of coming back out and like buying a lot of things that maybe they just wanted to try and they never, usually didn't have a chance to. So then you're kind of seeing a mix of those both at this moment yeah. where some people are just kind of um, sticking down their wallet and not buying things versus others who are really still exploring and so on. Yeah, it's definitely a unique time in history. And I think the winners are going to be the companies that really listen to the consumer and understand how things have changed and how that should impact everything from their positioning, their distribution strategy, the pricing, all those things, because there's definitely plenty of market opportunity if you could strike the right chord. Uh, but I think consumer, I think businesses that stay stagnant are going to be the ones that ultimately find themselves on the wrong side of history. And I think it's going to continue to shake out the great businesses from the ones that are still looking, you know, in the rearview mirror, so to speak. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can continue to track this, but I just want to take the time to thank both of you again. I apologize for, uh, the tech difficulties, uh, but all's well that ends well, so to speak. And I use a good old mobile device and it worked out fine. So, uh, glad we got on, but, um, it, it was really great just to dive into this because I think it's a it's such a big topic and it's obviously driving so much business, but it's one that I think often gets overlooked. Um, and I think it was it was great to be able to dive deeper into it. So I just want to th again thank each of you for joining, uh, Sham Shireen for taking the time, and I want to thank uh, our loyal Suzy State of the Consumer audience uh, for joining, which must be our thirtieth or fortieth edition of State of the Consumer. We'll get that number. Uh, I'm a little too frazzled right now to remember the number, but we've done a lot of these. Uh, and we're going to continue to because I don't think we're going to have this figured out for quite some time. So on behalf of the Suzy team and our guests, I just want to thank everybody for joining today's State of the Consumer webinar. Um, and until next time, stay safe, everyone. Take care. Thanks, everyone.